Hey guys, welcome to Tutor Terrific. Today I'm going to be doing a problem solving video in physics. Um, this is a uh, video about force problems on inclines. Uh, this is a commonly difficult problem for those of you who are studying Newtonian dynamics. And uh, this one's going to involve friction too to make it extra saucy and complicated. So um, the problem at hand requires you, and this video really requires you to have a good facility in kinematics, which involves these equations over here, which we'll be using today, and in some basic Newtonian dynamics, such as the sum of the forces equals mass times acceleration, and uh, kinetic friction uh, is an equation, uh, the coefficient of kinetic friction, and the normal force multiplied together. So you need to have a basic facility in these things to really understand or make use of this, but if you do, this is the problem for you. So today, we have a bar of soap that is accelerating down an incline that is 8.0 degrees and the length of the incline is 8 meters and it also gives you the problem the coefficient of kinetic friction a very small 0 0.050 between the soap and the ramp so there's some friction there we can't ignore all friction but we are asked how long will it take the soap bar to traverse this entire ramp 8 meters long given that information. So this is quite a lengthy problem, but uh, the first step is always to draw a picture, which we already have. Thankfully, everything is already labeled for us that we know. And uh, after that, if you uh, already have the picture or you've drawn your picture based on the verbiage of the problem, your next step is to draw a free body diagram. A free body diagram for the soap bar. Now that is a map which shows all the forces that are acting on the object. Not forces that the object imparts on other things, but the force is imparted on the soap bar itself. So I'm gonna draw the soap bar right here. Let's talk about the forces acting on the soap. Well, the soap has mass. We weren't given mass, which might scare some of you, but we don't need it. But it does have mass, and so it has a force of gravity it has weight and that'll point straight down okay there's the force of gravity on the soap the soap is resting on a surface and if that's true then there's a normal force which is perpendicular to the surface itself so that would be at this eight degree angle like this that's the normal force okay in addition to these two forces we were told that there's a coefficient of kinetic friction which means there's friction in the kinetic sense and that always opposes motion so if the direction of velocity as this soap bar accelerates is down the hill parallel to the ramp the force of friction will be pointing parallel to the ramp but anti-parallel to that velocity so backwards so like this at a right angle to the normal force like so all right so this uh, uh, designates a somewhat of a problem for us when we're analyzing this situation because we have two forces at an angle. It is much easier to reduce the number of forces at an angle if you can and that is done by rotating the axes. Currently the axes are like this. Vertical straight up and horizontal is straight left and right. Well that means we have two forces at an angle. If we were to rotate the axes such that the y-axis pointed directly parallel to the normal force and the x-axis pointed um, horizontal to that, 90 degrees to that, we'd have just one vector at an angle that would be gravity. So what we're going to do is we're going to redraw this picture where the axes themselves are rotated. So it's, it's the normal force points directly upwards. Okay, so I'm drawing it like this and you'll see why in a second. The friction force will point this way, okay, directly horizontal now, and gravity will point at an 8 mm -hmm. degree east of south direction, like this. There's the force of gravity, okay. After you've rotated your axes to the desired location, you need to now resolve any vector at an angle still into components. Only gravity is at an angle, and so I'm going to... Go ahead 
and resolve gravity into components. And its components will be these dashed lines. Okay, to show they are components of an existing vector. The horizontal component we will call FGX, and the vertical component we will call FGY. The angle, which is right here, using geometry, is actually congruent to this 8 degree angle here. So this is 8.0 degrees. I'm not going to show that right now. If you do enough of these problems, you'll realize that that is going to be the angle uh, between gravity vector and vertical is the same after you rotate the axes as the vertical of the incline originally. Now, um, something to keep in mind that I didn't already mention is the value of the acceleration due to gravity, lowercase g, that is 9.8 meters per second squared. We are going to be using that in our, uh, I'll put an extra zero on there, we're going to be using that in this problem. Okay. Now, why did we do this? Well, remember, we need to find time, okay? We're going to have to, since this is a force problem on inclines, get to time by using Newton's second law. The force sum equals mass times acceleration. We can actually split this up into two equations, one for the y direction and one for the x direction. And everything is in components except for the mass. So I could set up an equation for the sum of forces in the y direction. I'm going to leave some space here. And I could set up a sum of forces in the x direction. So what you literally do for each of these equations is you add up the vectors in those particular directions, whether up or down for y, or right or left for x. So let's do it for sum of forces y. I usually set this one up first because it's a little simpler than the other one. There's less going on. And in this case, that would be true. So let's look at Fy. We need to determine a positive direction before we can continue with this analysis. And I always choose, when we are going down an incline, I choose downward as positive. Okay? But you could also set upwards as positive if you like. It doesn't matter. So if downward is positive, that means FGY, the vertical component of gravity, which points straight down, is a positive vector that I'm going to add to FN. Now, normal force, if positive is downward, will be negative. So I'm going to actually subtract its value. This will equal MA. But here's the thing. Is there acceleration in the Y direction? Well, that would only be true. Remember, we're rotating our axes. So this is the Y direction now. It would only be true if the soap uh, is levitating off the ramp, which it's not, or if it's falling through the ramp, which it's not. So that means MA is M times zero, or zero. Okay, let's continue our analysis. I'm going to need an expression for the normal force in this problem. So I'm going to separate the normal force right now. F, G, Y, excuse me, not x, fgy will equal fn when I add it to the other side. Okay, now let's look at fgy itself. If you look closely, you notice that fgy is trigonometrically related to fg. If you make this a right angle here, you realize that that's the same as fgx. We've got a little right triangle. Okay, fgy is the adjacent side to the angle and Fg would be the hypotenuse. So you might notice a cosine relationship between them. That's because Fgy is equal to Fg times the cosine of eight degrees. That is very true. So we can write Fg cosine 8.0 degrees equals Fn. Now I want you to remember something from physics in addition to this. Um, the force of gravity um, is always usually replaced with mass times g at 9.8 meters per second squared. You can always replace fg with mg, as we say. So back here, I'm going to replace fg with the expression mg. So now I have mg cosine 8.0 degrees equals the normal force. I will be using this very soon. Now let's move on to the sum of forces in the x direction. Okay, this expression 
has two forces as well, Fgx and Fk, but we'll do a little more um, substitution than we did in the Fy sum equation. So we need to choose a positive direction. I'm going to choose the direction the soap is traveling, which is to the right as positive. Okay, and remember, it's a little bit downward, but we've rotated our axis from here to here. So now this is to the right in our rotated axis diagram. So Fgx is positive, and Fk then would be negative because it points in the wrong direction, quote-unquote. So the sum of the forces would be Fgx plus negative Fk. Um, now, is there acceleration in the x direction? You betcha. This FGX is a little bit bigger than the friction because this soap accelerates down the hill. In order to get to the other end at a certain time, the ray we also know that it accelerates is because it is set from rest at the top of the hill and allowed to slide under its own quote-unquote power. So that means there's an acceleration. So the sum of these forces equals mass times acceleration acceleration is not zero. Realize though that this is a horizontal acceleration. So we put a little x here just to remind ourselves that this is horizontal acceleration only. Okay, now it's time to do some substitutions. The reason I'm doing all of these is because I don't know what fk is, I don't know what fgx is, and I don't know what the acceleration is. And I don't even know the mass. I'm not even given that. But what's the goal? We have to remember the goal. The goal is to get time, okay? Now, as you may have guessed, and you would be right, none of these force equations have time in them. None of them. So we have to have a go-between so we can get back to the kinematic equations up here, known as the big three, which have time in them. And it looks like, according to those equations, we need A, the acceleration. And we can get that through these force equations. The acceleration is like the liaison, or the go-between, between, between the force equations and the kinematics equations. So we have to find this Ax. There's no vertical acceleration, so all we need is Ax. So that's why we're gonna do some substitution now. Fgx, let's look at that. Fgx is here, also here, in our uh, triangle analysis, this geometric analysis. Notice how it's opposite the 8 degree angle, and so we know that sine is opposite over hypotenuse, so Fgx will equal Fg sine 8.0 degrees. That's the force of gravity in the x direction. Next we have the force of friction. Luckily, I have this nice expression for the force of friction in terms of some things that I could know. I definitely know mu k. 0 0.05 um, and I have an expression for the normal force hopefully I can use that well I'm gonna substitute those in so the force of friction is excuse me I'm gonna subtract force of friction which is mu k times Fn I'm gonna use this expression right here for Fn m g cosine 8.0 degrees that equals M-A-X. Okay, almost done with the substitutions. Now remember what I said about F-G. Even if there's this sign next to it, you can still replace the F-G with mass times gravity, M-G. So I'm going to write that. M-G sine 8.0 degrees minus mu K M-G cosine 8.0 degrees equals m a x oh my goodness looks like i made this worse rather than better but that's not true remember how i told you we didn't have mass well we don't need it that's because if you look at all of these terms there's a mass in each and every one so that means it cancels so you can divide out the m's from every term now all that's left is things that we know. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move things up a little bit. I'm gonna continue the problem. So now the next step is to write that same expression without the m's in it. So we have g sine of 8.0 degrees minus 
mu k g cosine 8.0 degrees. And that equals the acceleration we're after. Okay, now remember that g equals 9.8 meters per second squared, and that we learned earlier in physics. And we also know mu k, mu k, the coefficient of kinetic friction, that's 0 0.05. So we're going to plug this all in and get our expression for a of x. In your calculator, you want to make sure that you are first in the proper mode, which should be degree mode, because um, we're working with degrees. That's how you do it on the TI-83 or 84 calculators. Check out one of my calculator tutorial videos for more information. Then, we're going to start plugging this in. So, this is the first term, and 9.8 times the sine of 8.0 degrees. Close those parentheses, that's one term, then we're going to subtract from that. Um, a larger product of things. First, the coefficient of kinetic friction, 0 0.05 times 9.8 times the cosine of 8.0 degrees. Close those parentheses, and that should equal our acceleration. Let's see. Aha, 0.87. Much less acceleration than due to gravity, because that's a very, um, very flat angle, very low angle. And so, that is our acceleration. Now let's keep a lot of the digits because we don't want to round too many times and we're not, had, we're not at our final answer yet. So I'm going to write the following down for AX. I'm going to write down about four or five, actually six significant figures. 0.878665 meters per second squared. So now I'm going to make room and we're going to move on and figure out which kinematic equations we will need to use to figure out how long it takes to get down the ramp. So I've made some room now and I've written down our um, solved for acceleration, partially rounded, 0.878665 meters per second squared. Now I need to figure out what um, set or single kinematics equation I'm going to have to use to get to time from here. That's my goal, remember, is to get to time. Now realize also that this is the only acceleration, it's in one dimension, these are one dimensional kinematic equations, so I don't really need the x near the a anymore. In order to figure out which one of these, and I only have to use one of these kinematic equations I need, I need to write down what else I know. And I know a few things. I actually know um, the initial position, the initial velocity, okay, that's really helpful. The initial position, since I know the entire length I'm traveling, can be set to zero, zero meters. That's really helpful. In addition, I know that I'm starting the soap from the top at rest, and that means the initial velocity is zero as well. This is going to help me a ton determine which equation is best to use to figure out the total time. Now, if you look at the first one, that has time in it. It's really nice. But the problem is, I don't know the final velocity that the soap has at the end of the ramp. If I did, I'd be able to use that very nicely. The third equation here does not have time in it. However, I could use it to solve for v, and then plug v into here, and then get time. However, that's two equations when I only really need one. The middle one. That's right. I can use the middle equation, which looks scary, especially when it comes to t, However, it's not so bad. Let me show you. I'm going to write that here. Again. Now let's talk about some things. I told you that the x naught is 0. So that means this first term is 0. We don't have to worry about it. I also told you that um, the initial velocity is 0. So that means this term is also 0. So now, we don't have to worry about this being a nasty quadratic equation, it's very simple. We just have x equals one half a t squared. Awesome. Well, now I just have to solve for t. Now, if with you using your algebra skills, uh, we can see that this one half, I'm gonna multiply both sides by two. And then I gotta divide by a. And then I just have this expression equals t squared, which would require us to square root both sides. So that means t equals the square root of 2x over a. 
Okay, so now all I have to do is plug in the final x value, which is 8 meters, and the a, which we derived earlier. So we have 2 times 8.0 meters, and that's all divided by 0.878665 meters per second squared. Always want to check and make sure that uh, my units work out and the meters cancel and the second squared are on the bottom of the bottom. So they'd come to the top, square root them, I get seconds. Perfect. Now, when I um, calculate this time in my calculator, I get 4.26 and lots more. Um, it's quite a long decimal actually, but let's check out uh, the significant figures that I'm allowed to have. If you come back up to the top, you can see all of my initial measurements have two significant figures. Since there was plenty of adding and multiplying uh, and dividing, we're going to have to go by the counting rule, which is just you can only have as many sig figs, no matter where they are, as your least accurate measurement. And so two sig figs is what I'm limited to because of all my measurements being two sig figs. So I have to round this guy, and he's going to round upwards. He's going to round up to 4.3 seconds. Perfect. This is our time. Now that's an 8 meter ramp, so 4.3 seconds seems kind of reasonable for a rather moderate acceleration. Awesome guys, thanks for watching. I appreciate your views and your comments and your likes, so keep it up. This is Falconator, signing out.